Exactly. Hey, why don't we go ahead and get started? It's 12.03. Um, so welcome everyone to Goal Setting Simplified for 2022. I have to think about that. Um, with Deborah Eckerling. My name is Taryn Edwards and I am one of the librarians uh, here at the Mechanics Institute of San Francisco. And this event was produced in collaboration with the San Francisco Writers Conference. Together, we strive to provide high quality learning experiences for writers at low cost or free. Um, and I'd like to thank those of you who elected to support this event and pay a little something to attend because it really does go a long way uh, to help us do more in these challenging times. <clears throat> For those of you who are unfamiliar with Mechanics Institute, we are an independent membership organization that houses a wonderful library, the oldest in fact de designed to serve the general public in California, not just those who wield wrenches. Um, we are also a cultural event center and a world renowned chess club that is the oldest in the nation. Right now we are at the Institute slowly reopening. We're open uh, six days a week. Um, many of our events, however, are still virtual but I encourage you to consider becoming a member with us. It is only $120 a year. And with that, you help support our contribution to the cultural world of the San Francisco Bay Area and also um, uh, writing activities. Um, so today our speaker is Deborah Eckerling, who is the author of the award-winning book, Your Goal Guide a roadmap for setting, planning, and achieving your goals. And I think we all are eager to learn from her uh, as we are closing in on perhaps one of the hardest years we've ever lived. Um, Deborah is a workshop leader, a corporate consultant. She works regularly with creative types and entrepreneurs and executives um, who want to figure out uh, what it is that they really want and, um, and develop strategies to get it. Uh, she's spoken for mechanics at least one other time and her website, the debmethod.com, which I'll put in the chat space is incredibly rich. So I hope that you check that out after um, the, this event is over. Um, before we get started, I just wanna encourage you to use our chat space. Um, and at the end of the event, we will we will, or, or I should say, let me know if you have any questions and I will turn your mic on at the end of the event. So you can ask Deborah directly. Uh, and last but not least, I, we are recording this event and I will send you a link to the event video um, in a couple of days so that you can review uh, what it was that we talked about today. Thank you so much for tuning in and thank you, Deborah, for sharing your knowledge with us. Well, thank you for having me. I, I love, obviously, I love goals. I love writers because, you know, I am one, but I've been one, I think, ever since I learned how to write, I've enjoyed telling stories. So I, I think that that's why I end up doing so many things with the writing community. And I also have my uh, community for writers, creatives, and entrepreneurs write on online, and we'll put that link in the chat. If you're here and you need some motivation, and support for yourself, for your goals, and some community, please join me over there. And as you mentioned, the devmethod.com, it's got links to my um, Goal Chat Live recaps and just all the resources and motivation you would ever need to figure out what you want and how to get it, which is what we're talking about today because no joke, the last two years have been interesting. Is it, we'll use that word because that's the lightest way to put it. And a lot of people have had really good years. A lot of people had had terrible years. Most of us have been up and down somewhere in the middle. And we have a brand new year that we're running into. And now is the time to set new goals and make new plans. So let's, I know 2021 was supposed to be amazing. And for you, I hope it was. Uh, I think 2022, we can only hope for it even better. And that's why I put in the chat, you know, what are your wins from this year? And you still have, I do do some overlap where I start the new year in December, 
we do count all the 2021 wins <laughs> in in this month as well. So look at the different ways in which you've excelled this year and let that momentum propel you into making even more goals, setting more dreams and getting to the place that you want in the new year. So I think any questions or shall we jump on in? I say we jump. I don't see any burning questions. So that sounds like a great idea. Excellent. Uh, well, again, I'm Deborah Eckerling. I am the, the founder of the Deb Method, which is my system for goal setting simplified. Changing your life is challenging enough. The instructions need to be easy. So I made them really, really easy. And I'm also the author of your goal guide. And what we're going to talk about today is the Deb Method and strategies for success. And that's all covered in my book. But now you get the, the narrated version of Deb and my system. So who's ready to set some goals for 2022? Woohoo! Okay, I'm just gonna imagine just all this enthusiasm and applause. So let's go with it. The secret of achieving any goals is you need to know what you want to get what you want. We're all striving for what I call Goaltopia, that magical place where you are achieving your goals and living the life you want. So when you think about this ideal life, what does that look like? What is your goal? And as we're, this is catered to writers, but we're all writers and. My community is for writers, creatives, and entrepreneurs, because if you're one, you are likely the other two. So independent of or in tandem with your writing life, what is your goal? Uh, to become a known expert, build a successful business, elevate your career, achieve work-life balance. I'm guessing you're at least two or three of these things, but it really starts with that, that component of visualization. When you think about the life you want, when you think toward the end of next year or in five years, what do you want to be known as, known for, what do you want to have written? What is what is your life? Are you living? <laughs> Do you remember when the ideal writer life was to live in a cabin so you can write all the time? Who knew that everybody would be living the writer life for the last two years? What is that dream of yours? Because it really starts with that dream. Um, as I mentioned before, as Taryn mentioned, I am a workshop leader, consultant, project catalyst, but more importantly, I am a motivator because I believe that anything isn't just possible, it is probable. But what stops people from achieving their goals is they overthink their goals, they underthink their goals. They're living goals that were appropriate for them several years ago, but not for their current life. And it really starts with that choice, that choosing yourself and imagining that ideal life and then working toward it. So the Deb method, my system, is very simple. Uh, these are the three phases that are to set you up for success by building the foundation for your goals and making a plan. And this is what we're gonna talk about today, determine your mission, to get what you want, you need to know what you want, but also why are you the person to bring this into the world? Uh, what is your mission behind what you do and in what ways does it help others? Once you figure out your mission, it's all about exploring the option. Okay, I want to be known as X. Well, great. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to write a series of books? Are you going to create courses? Are you going to lead workshops, speak, um, or be experts on other people's platforms? The options are endless. So you need to explore what that means for you. So you can educate yourself, pick out your goals and then brainstorm your path. So it really all starts with visualization. When you think about the life you want, what does that look like? What is, are you the New York Times bestselling author of? International speaker in this subject. You've written a book to build your business. What is that visualization? And if you feel like sharing, please put that in the chat because we would all love to hear. Once you have that visualization, now it's 
kind of taking it, it's inventory time. So write your current bio because to get where you're going, you need to take a status of where you are. In bios, if you're an author, if you don't already have one, it's more than time. Uh, but the bio versions, you can do the two line bio that goes with whatever articles that you write to get yourself out there one or two paragraph bios for introducing yourself when you're speaking, and then maybe something longer, a one pager for your website. But it's always good to have a couple different versions. But with your bio, what you want to do is put the you that you want out in the world in a really solid framework. So if you work at a company, Maybe you're doing something you love. Maybe it's a job that you're good at and it's fine. But your life's passion is to be writing fiction, nonfiction, screenplays, whatever that is. For your writer bio, focus on that and maybe even bring in elements of ways in which your career supports the you that you want to present to the world. And once you have your current bio, write your future bio. And again, you can do different versions of this, but the key, there are a few keys to the future bio. You want to write it in the present tense and you want to write it in the third person. So it's author jacket copy. It's um, if there's an article talking about the innovators in your industry and they list you, what does that say? And you can write your future bio for a year from now, two, three, five, whatever makes sense for you because things are so rapidly changing and we're entering the next new normal. Well, we've been entering the next new normal, I think every two or three months over the last couple of years. So what do you want your future to look like? Even at the end of this year, because there's still time to get another big win in calendar year 2021. So you're looking at your current, your future, and now comes the fun part your mission statement, because that's what takes the who you are, what makes you unique, and what you want to create, and what you do, and then how it helps others. And again, the way you help can be to inform, educate, entertain, or you can create something to make the world a better place and also write about it. Um, Whatever it is, your mission, for example, mine is to use my background experience and systems to help as many people as possible figure out what they want and how to get it so they can live more fulfilled lives and in turn help others. So what I would love to do is just for you to take a couple minutes and sketch out your mission. Again, it's the who you are, what you want, and how you help. And if there are any questions, we can also put that in the chat. <clears throat> I, now, I don't know if I can see chat while screen sharing. Is there anything? I don't see anything in the chat yet. Okay. Our, our guests are quiet. <laughs> That's okay. I can okay. talk. <laughs> Well, you're providing a lot of content, so they probably need to uh, ruminate on that a little bit. Well, then I will give them part two of the mission statement question as well, because as long as you're you're ruminating, why not think more? Um, is once you have your mission statement, then you want to shorten it into a motto. So, my mission, as I've said before. Um, will is shortened into my motto, which is goal setting simplified. So everything that I create, whether it's my presentations, my workshops, my book, um, my blog posts, everything I create is goal setting in a simplified format because changing your life is challenging enough. The instructions need to be easy. So what is your motto? And you can have a personal motto and a professional one. And it can be your ideal title, it can be a theme song, it can be anything that you look at this and get really excited because this is what you are about. So maybe if you're not comfortable sharing your mission statement, 
maybe share your motto. So Taryn, <clears throat> yes. would you like to share your mission, your motto as a human? Um, yes, well, I can at least tell you my motto. So the, I guess, um, I've come to adopt the same motto as that of the Mechanics Institute, which is be just and fear not. And I, that means to, um, you know, follow your heart and do what is right and not be afraid of the consequences. And the more I think about that, the more I realize that that is how I try to live. Um, because, you know, we're all confronted with quandaries uh, and often are unsure of what to do next. And I just try to follow my heart and do what I think is the right thing to do. And uh, consequences be damned. <laughs> but that's, first of all, A plus answer. I well, think <laughs> because when, when you're living your genuine life, in service to other people, consequences be damned or what have you, when you're true to yourself, that, that first of all, authenticity has never been more in style than it has been now. And people can tell the same way. If you love what you do, they can tell. If you don't love what you do, boy, oh boy, can people tell. Everything will emanate from from where, from your standpoint. So Eric shared his mission um, to help people, helping people grow plants regardless of location or climate. Um, I love that as a mission. I would say to just the, the only thing I would add to it is the value of plants. So helping people grow plants regardless of location or client, because this is what growing plants and or what plants can do for you. And I know it's probably implicit in Eric's mind, um, but that that's just the only thing I would add because it's important. I mean, there are studies about how healthy it is to be working in dirt. There's also, um, when you grow your own plants or your own food, it's definitely gonna be more healthy because you know what you're putting into your body. So I think that's amazing that you do that. Does anybody else want to share a mission or motto? And again, you can cheat. Find a, uh, raise your hand if you remember Allie McBeal and her therapist said, you need a theme song to empower you when you are feeling low. So you can use a theme song that makes you happy. I like um, Sugarland Settlin' because it's, I ain't settling for anything less than everything because your life, your choice, whatever you create, it's yours. And it all starts with choosing yourself, embracing what you love and putting a plan in action to turn it into reality. So that's what determining your mission is all about. And I, I wanna add one more point, uh, the visualization. If you can create something that embodies what you where you want to be at so you want to speak to sold out crowds so now you want to speak to sold out zoom crowds the next time you're in a zoom meeting of over i think it's just 99 plus people to take a screenshot and put yourself as the highlighted speaker and put that on your screensaver in the background of your like behind your computer that these visual cues because it's one thing to know what you want, but when you see it, you see the treasure you're working towards, that will keep you motivated and excited. So I always say, keep your visualization somewhere you could see it, keep your mission, and of course, have your motto running through your head throughout all of your activities, because that is the lens with which you can decide what makes sense to work on because we don't always have all the time in the world. Even it, it's, it's like Taryn was saying before the donations, any donation to Mechanics Institute makes a difference. Any donation of time to creating the life you want, it adds up, it makes a difference. Any thoughts or questions on visualization, writing your mission, creating the motto,
anyone can grow. I love that as the motto for you, Eric. And I, the thing that I love most about it is it's, it encompasses more than just plants. Anyone can grow in growing plants. It's growing who you are as a human. So I love the multiple meanings of that, whether it was meant or not. Um, where are my gold stars? Gold star, way to go. Uh, Darren, anything you want to ask about or add? Um, no. Okay. No. Uh, it, I think- Enjoying how you're rolling with it. Okay, well, once you have your mission, it can manifest itself in so many different ways. Um, so that's where we get to explore your options. There we go. Um, and my favorite activity for this is my take on journaling, which is directed journaling. So you have this mission, you have something you want to offer the world, but you're not quite sure the best way to do it. And that's when you're in this research phase of exploring your options. So you start with directed journaling and this is how it works. A set in your calendar, uh, a 15 minute appointment, three, four, five times over the course of a few days or a week. And during that time, it's just free writing, answering one question or a series of questions related to a, a specific topic. So what do I want? What do I want to create? What does this mean for me? Well, I want to spread the word about how important plants are for people. Should I do a podcast? Should I write a book? I should probably do both. If I did a podcast, what would I do for my podcast on plants and on and on and on? And what happens with directed journaling, you do this a few times and the secret is do not read any of your entries until you've completed the exercise because then you can go back in and read through all your um, pre-writing, <clears throat> your babbling on paper as it will, and find your common themes because something you thought was what you wanted to do, maybe only mentioned it a couple of times, but this new idea came out of the pre-writing exercise. And you mentioned that like 10 times and you're like, hmm, I should really look into doing a Instagram for my love of plants. You know, whatever you write about the most, you need to pay attention to because you're, that's what you're passionate about. And if you're passionate about something, you're going to be more willing to put in the time because you already have the energy behind it. So you do your direct journaling, you find the common themes, and then identify the options within them. So let's say you went through your, your journaling notes and you're thinking, okay, well, I need a blog. I need some sort of show, but I don't know if it's going to be a podcast or a video show or a series of images, not quite sure. And then I'm also want to write a book on the subject. So you've got these things, but it's, it's the one where you want to get your expertise in the world, but you're not quite sure how you want it to show up those are a great opportunity to research the possibility. And that's where your network comes into play. So if you're, you're watching this, whether it's live or on the replay and we're not connected, please find me on LinkedIn, me network, ISU network. You can't reach your goals on your own. You need your people. So you can go through and say, well, I want to explore what it would be like to start a podcast, to start a video show, to start, um, an imagery <laughs> campaign, whether it's uh, through Instagram or maybe it's short videos or whatever, who do I know in my network? Who do I know who knows someone in my network who has that information? Or you can just Google and see what would it take to start doing this? What would it take to start doing that? Do your research and see what, what sparks the most interest, what is in alignment the most with what you want to do. Let's say you work in business and you've got three or four or five or 10. <laughs> we'll go to three, four or five different ideas for the book you want to write. Fine. What would it mean for writing 
the three different books. And that way you're saying, uh, who do you know in the space? What is out there in terms of these different types of books? Because especially it, actually, especially if you traditionally publish, but even if you self-publish, it's super helpful to write a book proposal because that will keep you focused. But the, op the options are see what's out there in the areas that you want to write about and see what makes sense, what can you do that's unique or different and use the exploration time for that. Or maybe you want to write fiction, uh, but you don't know what genre and you want to explore something new, see who you know, who knows things. I'm sure Mechanics Institute has a backlog of videos on different genres and topics, so you can get some education there. I'm sure I know uh, San, Francisco, San Francisco Writers Conference will have information you need, but see who, what you can find to educate yourself and then research those possibilities, then make a choice. And it's not like, you can choose one, but prioritize when you think, what is the goal? What is the big goal that a year from now you're going to be celebrating because you achieved it? What is the goal that you want for five years from now? Because you can see it. You're not quite sure oh, how to get Welcome, there. everyone. Thank you for joining us for our pro. Whoop. Sorry about so, that. That's okay. I was trying to get our YouTube video <laughs> list to come up to put in the chat space and they all started playing at once. <laughs> because that's how technology rolls and how much technology loves us so much it drives us crazy, right? Right. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, where were we? Okay, so you don't have to make all of the choices, but think, think in terms of what is a good long-term personal goal and what is a good long-term professional goal and what is a good goal for the end of next year both personally and professionally because those personal and professional goals work together you know if you're stressed at your job it's going to impact your personal life if there's something going on in your personal life if it's good it's going to positively impact your professional life if it's not so good it will have negatives and so look at the things that you need to do in the short term and the long term and then it's time to make a plan so are there any questions on explore your options or this process okay any questions Jen? no i mean it's pretty straightforward it, it's simple right <laughs> So once you have your idea of what you want to create, you want to brainstorm your path. And that means writing down all of your goals. This is short term, long term. I want some reach goals, some dream goals, some easy goals, because you want to be able to check things off. And again, it should be your professional goals as well as your personal goals. If you, um, what are they calling it the COVID-19 like the freshman 15 if you've spent a lot of time um enjoying food and you want to get back in shape so getting healthy is a personal goal when you're healthier you're going to be more productive it's just how it works if you've got you really want to write this book but your day job is driving you crazy and then at the end of the day you have nothing to give back to your writing goals, then maybe it's a time to look at your job, your career, and make a switch. And that might out prioritize your writing because you know that once you're in a day job that you enjoy, then you'll have more energy for your writing goals. Or alternatively, maybe if you set more writing goals, you'll be happier with your side hustle and that will leak into your job. So think about all of the things and write them down. And again, you want your professional goals and personal goals and within them, your long-term goals, your short-term goals, your benchmarks, your tasks, put like easy things like, like cook once a week or twice a week or eat out less because or work out for five minutes a day, put 
easy things on there because I want you to have all of the wins. So if you want to take a minute and write out some of these goals or in, in my book, the first half of my book walks you exactly through Deb and there are worksheets and exercises as well. So if you want a little more detail and more examples, that's a really good place to, to look. So you want them all out there and then you're going to divide and conquer. So under your professional goals, put the long-term goals and then what short-term goals you need to do to get to the long-term goals and what benchmarks you need to accomplish to achieve the short-term goals. And then from the benchmarks, what action items. And I like using building a website as an example of this because it doesn't matter what your business is, you need some sort of digital footprint, some home base for your content. And that way, so for your long-term goal, whatever it is, one of your short-term goals is build my online presence and website. In there, in building your blog, you'll have benchmarks like um, do all the technical aspects. That's where you figure out your hosting and your template and your URLs and all that, all the intricacies that go into building something. Um, all those tasks lead to achieving that benchmark. Next, you want to think about your branding. You know, what do you, what colors are you going to use? What logo are you going to use? What ways can you use your motto to shape your brand in all those aspects? And then the third benchmark is to create your content plan. And that starts with what am I going to create? What is my frequency? How long will my post be? what sort of interviews, so figure out the content. So when you figure out the content, you do the technical aspects, you do the branding, boom, you reach all those benchmarks, like magic, you've created a website or a blog. So that's how we look at mapping out more uh, project-based goals and professional goals. For professional goals, I think of them as more like lifestyle changes for most of them. Now, if you're gonna build a tree house, or if you're going to renovate some part of your home, look at it in the same lens that you would the, the professional goals. But for more of lifestyle changes, say I want to save more money, then you would brainstorm all of your ideas for things you can do to save more money, or I want to make more money, brainstorm all the things you could do to make more money. Um, and then I'm like, check in with yourself for an hour each week to do the things or explore one of these ideas until you hit on something. Um, another really good general lifestyle goal would be to work out more, but you hate working out. So maybe what you would do is brainstorm all the different ways you can work out. And we all have you have a computer, you have access to exercise classes around the world, whether some trainers do them on Instagram, some do Zoom sessions. But what you can do is make your list of all the different types of exercise you want to try, and then choose one to do every month. And then once you hit on the one that you like, that's the one that you keep. So you make the big list, you set appointments to do the things, and all that time adds up. So that is how your lifestyle personal goals can get incorporated into your plan. Any questions? Well, I think it's time to have some strategies for success, don't you? Yes, I'm busy brainstorming my goals and thinking, oh man. <laughs> That's a lot to write down. <laughs> but that's fine. The more you brainstorm, the better. It's even, okay, let's say you have your mission statement, but you're not sure about your motto. Brainstorm 20 mottos because the first five are going to be really easy. The second five will still be easy-ish. By the time you're getting to 17, 18, 19, 20, you have to really think. Now, you may still end up with a motto from the first group, 
but you have all of these ideas that you can you can merge together. Uh, same thing with brainstorming. If you want to do like 50 goals, and that's probably easy. I should probably give you homework to brainstorm 100 goals, but I think 50 is nicer. We we have all this information in our head. We know what we want. This is giving yourself permission to write it down and make a plan to do the things. That's all this is. You are, by setting goals in this manner, you are choosing yourself and you're choosing to create the life you want. You're giving yourself the time, energy, and space to do so. And really, to set yourself up for success, it really starts with posting those goals everywhere. So you probably do not want your list of 50 goals everywhere. Um, but what you do want is to choose the top five or the top 10 and write them down and post them on your wall, along with your visualization, along with your motto, along with your mission. So you're keeping your eye on the prize. I had, and this was a few years ago, a friend of mine once said, well, this is how I do New Year's resolutions. I write down my goals at the beginning of the year. Then I put the piece of paper in a folder in a drawer. And at the end of the year, I look and see if I accomplished anything. And it took me a minute to recover from the submission. And then I said, do me a favor. Next year, why don't you write down your goals and put them in a place where you look at them? And wouldn't you know, she was way more successful when she had her list of goals at her disposal that she looked at everywhere than she ever was when she kept those goals hidden. So start with writing down your top goals. I usually have a list of 10. I call it my dream big list that's on my, um, I, I'm, you can't see where I'm pointing. No one gets to see my office, but you can visualize my list is right here and it's everywhere. When, when I look at my office, it's the first thing I see when I sit down. Well, gosh, I want to see your office now. <laughs> Maybe when we stop recording. <laughs> I'm teasing you. <laughs> but are you? Um, yeah, yes, I'm happy to share it with you no recorded visual proof. Um, but I do have, I'll tell you what else is here. I've got my, my visual representation, my New York Times bestseller list where I wrote my book at the top. Um, I also keep, so my book won an Ippy Award, uh, independent uh, publishing. Um, it took the silver medal in self-help. And this is on my desk because, you know, you win one, you can win more, right? So you want to be keeping your eye on the prize at all times because it may take you a while, especially if you only have a couple hours a week to devote toward your goals, but you will get there. So any reminders that you will get there are going to help keep you motivated and excited working towards it. So you have your goals posted everywhere and then your to-do list. So the same way that you brainstormed all of your goals each week, you know, whether you do it Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I tend to do mine on Sunday because I lead my goal chat Twitter chat on Sunday nights where I say, what was your biggest win last week? What are your goals for the week? So I'll do it before. So I've got it. I like to, I never ask my community to do things that I'm not prepared to do myself. So I always answer my own questions. So uh, brainstorm the to-do list and divide and conquer. You know, I've got one category for client work, one category for uh, communications work, um, personal things, workshops, book promotion, and ongoing projects. And in each category, I have the things that need to get done that week. And the other place that what I'll do is I write out my list and then I will type it into a calendar listing on my Google calendar. And that way my goals are everywhere I am, which again was more relevant when we used to leave the house more. 
but I like having everything tracked, which kind of jumps down to the next thing. Once you have your to-do list, you can set appointments with yourself to do the things. And whether it's an hour a week or a half hour, three times a week, put those appointments in your calendar. And after the rule is you can move your appointments, you can't delete them. So after your goal time, make a note of what you accomplished. So again, at the end of the week or the month, when you don't feel like you've been so productive, you can look and see your wins. And I, I like Michael put in the chat, I put my notes into my cell phone in notes so I can look at that. Or I put my goals into my cell phone in notes so I can look at them all the time, starting with coffee in the morning. I reread them. Most of us always have our cell with us these days. Um, yes, absolutely. I was, I did a, I don't know if it was an inner, I think it was an interview uh, last week. And I was explaining how on my phone, I keep, um, I change it for a while. It was my book, especially before my book came out. Now I have my podcast, The Deb Show, I keep on my, um, because it's uh, conversations and motivation. So this is another thing I'm all about. And whenever I answer my phone, it's a reminder of what I create, what I work towards. And the woman who interviewed me then pulled out her phone and showed, I found this inspirational quote and I look at it every time I pick up my phone. So I think it can be your screensaver. It can be in your documents, in your phone. It can, I hate to use the word should, but I will, should be somewhere where you look often so you keep things top of mind. So good on you, Michael. Gold star. Woohoo. Um, so you post your goals everywhere, you embrace your to-do list, you schedule your time and track your time, and also remember the five of seven rules. A lot of goal setting experts will tell you, don't break the chain, work towards your goals every day. I don't think that's realistic for most people. We're very busy. You can think about your goals every day. And if all you do is think about your goals, that's cheating, but aim for three, four, five days a week working towards your goals, these appointments. Again, only schedule what you think you can do because you want that kind of, you want to set yourself up for success. Don't tell yourself that you have to work on it every day when you've got a major project for day job due because if you get 15 minutes that week, you'll be lucky. Take the 15 minutes. Do the 15 minutes and take that as the win. Uh, and then the other aspect is to create rules and rewards. What do you have to do each week to get things done? I think uh, networking goals are great, great for rules and rewards. Um, what makes sense for you? How many networking events, whether it's a mixer, or something educational, um, workshop, interactive coffee meeting, what makes sense for you each week? And maybe if you do three weeks of these three networking events, you can take the fourth week off. Maybe you want to write 30 pages a month, a page a day. If you get it done early, then you can take a couple days off. The rules that work for you, the rewards that work for you are only going to be, <laughs> they're only going to work if you do them in concert with your life, with your needs, with your wants. So my rules won't necessarily work for everyone, but think of what makes sense and what will, again, set you up for success because that's the name of the game. We set goals because we are choosing our le this life that we want, but we're not there yet. So we're working towards it. Slow and steady will get you there. And maybe that momentum, the slow and steady is going to go into turbo mode after a month or two of a couple hours a week, you're so engrossed in your project, what you're creating, you can give it more time and more energy and you're happier. And then that's gonna leak over the rest of your life. So look at what works for you, do more of what works, stop doing what doesn't work because you know, you probably know right now what doesn't work that you do anyway, because someone else told you, Stop it. 
only create rules that work for you that you will do that brings upon brings you closer to your goals. Um, I'm Deb. This has been so much fun. Uh, you can connect with me, um, email info at thedevmethod.com. If you go to my website, thedevmethod.com slash blog, you can see the recaps to my live shows and get your dose of inspiration and motivation. And if you go to, we're filming this in December. So if you go to debsember.com, there's more information about my coaching and my events and the things that I'm creating to help others succeed. Uh, you can grab my book. It's available on Amazon in ebook, audiobook, and actual book, or you can get it at your favorite bookstore. And please connect with me, my groups, follow the Dev Method on Facebook, and connect with me on LinkedIn. And again, no, that's the wrong, you're going the wrong way. Go. Ah, I was just going to put up. Do you want to learn more about my book? Again, the first half of it goes through Deb, and the second half is strategies for success. It is like having a goal coach inspire uh, in your pocket. And the Facebook group is for people who are reading the book to ask questions and share their journey. Thank you so much for having me. And now we have plenty of time for questions. We do. Um, and I just wanted to point out that your book is in the Mechanics Library's collection. So even better. You can borrow it from us. And I'm sure you'll like it so much that you want to buy your own copy. <laughs> <laughs> um, does anyone have any questions? I can turn your mic on so you can ask Deborah directly. And if you don't, you can always, like I said, reach out, send me an email, info at thedevmethod.com and or join my groups or visit my website for links to all of my things, all of the things. Yeah, I mean, I, um, you brought up so many things that I think will help me hack through the soup of ideas and worries and plans that I have in my mind. Um, so I look forward to number one, reviewing the video when I have time to write things down with pencil and paper and also reading the book and working through the exercises in that to um, sort of crystallize what, it, how I want my year to look. Excellent. And uh, that makes me so happy. And it's, it's, we have been given such, I don't want to say the pandemic has been a blessing, but in some ways it has. It's really forced a lot of people to rethink their life. And good enough is not necessarily good. And what, what always gets me is, so my book came out in January, 2020. And the purpose was to help people embrace change by choice or circumstance. And then six weeks later, we all got a dose of circumstance. And the biggest secret of everything is you get to have the life you want. You put in the time, you make the plan. Wait, I said it backwards. Think about what you want, make the plan and putting the time. It, it's, it's math. Okay, we've just done math at, <laughs> at the mechanic library. Um, it's such a simple formula, but it's just saying, it's okay, I can do this. I was having a, a conversation with a friend of mine the other day, and she's, what she teaches, she's telling me she teaches about how you have to think about what you love doing when you were a kid. If you're having trouble um, thinking about what's next for you, think about the things that you enjoy when you were young. I picked up my book, and I think it's page 35, I said the exact same thing. <laughs> it, it was really mind blowing. Go back in time, think about those things that have stuck with you. You know, what is the book you always wanted to write? What, what was the business you always wanted to create? Did you have a lemonade stand? 
when I was growing up, there was a kid in the neighborhood who liked making lemon meringue pies. So he would make them and just give them out to the neighbors. And I, I like to think we lost touch. I like to think he's a pastry chef now. I don't know if he actually is, but this thing that he loved to do so much that he shared in his youth, it's like, that's the kernel. That's the thing that he loved that he shared. So what is your kernel? What is the thing that you always love to do? Maybe you accidentally, if you love how I said that, became known in writing a certain genre, but you've always wanted to write a memoir or you've always wanted to write um, sci-fi or something different than what you're known for. Write it. I think it's funny because I was into creative writing all through high school. And I even wrote a screenplay for fun back when I lived in Chicago. And then I got my freelance writing break literally within a week of finishing the first draft of my first screenplay. And that just came so much more naturally to me. So every now and then I play with one of my creative projects. That's my fun side writing thing. Um, but I develop because I write the way that I speak and nonfiction's always come naturally to me. This is what I do, but it doesn't mean I can't play and have fun with other things. Which is a really good note to, as we wrap up to end on, if you're not having fun, don't do it. <laughs> that is a great thing to end on. And, uh, and I just want to point out that right now, as we, I don't want to say, well, as we end 2021 and as we venture into a whole new year and possibly a whole new world um, in terms of COVID management and all of that, now is the time to really take advantage and think about how you want your life to be different, how you can take these steps to achieve your goals. I mean, I, I feel like now is the time to really re reassess and just rethink how you want your life to progress. So I appreciate so much um, you sharing your knowledge with us and, um, I think all of us are kind of stunned by the material that you've provided because uh, like for me, you've definitely given me some, a lot to, a lot of fat to chew on. <laughs> then I've done my job. Good, good. It's, it's see the possibilities, create the life you want. And, and you brought such a good point. If not, and also if not now, when? Do you I think want to learn that lesson, right? <laughs> exactly. Do you want to be sitting at the end of next year saying, oh, I really should have, don't, you don't want to should yourself, <laughs> right? I do not want you to be a year from now regretting not doing something because even if it's an hour a week, it's one more hour that you spent towards creating something that you didn't do but really take the time because when you take the time to hone in on the thing that excites you that that's like gold right. it's just oh i love this so much let it drive me forward and that's what it's going to do it's going to propel you yeah i want to pro be propelled and faster than perhaps i've been propelled before <laughs> Well, it, it's all in your power when you choose yourself and the, the well-being goals that that's something else that I speak about is goals for well-being. Be conscious of what makes you feel good. What makes you don't feel, what makes you feel not good. You know, do be protective of yourself. Don't say yes to things because you think other people have expectations. That's why the motto is so important because it's a great barometer of what you should say yes to and what, um, and when you say no to something, it gives someone else an opportunity to say yes to it. So say, it's not a fit. Let's talk again. Perhaps we can do something down the line together or, oh, you want me to volunteer? I would love to, but the timing is not right. It hit me up in another month or two when my schedule's clear. But 
set the boundaries because that will also help you. Because when you're good to yourself, everybody in your life is going to benefit. True, true. Yeah, setting boundaries is, I think, a challenge for a lot of people, certainly me. <laughs> oh, no, it's not just you. It, it's a huge challenge, especially people working from a home. Um, like I said, I could, I could go another hour on well-being goals, but it's, it goes back to the choosing yourself. Mm-hmm. I'm going to start my day at this time. I'm going to end my day at that time. I'm going to take lunch break. Maybe you can't take one every day, but you can take it more days than not. Um, it's being conscious of being connected on the weekends and not being connected. It's finding the time, energy, and space to enjoy life. Because right. we can enjoy life in this new next new normal. You can't. Again, (laughs) do more of the things that make you happy and stop doing the things that don't. Yeah, I think we're all looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for having me. It was great to see you. And thank you all for, for joining in the conversation. And I wish you all just so much success in the new year and beyond. And we wish the same for you, Deborah. Thank you. And I hope everyone has a great Wednesday. Get working on your goals and we'll see you virtually or in person soon. (laughs) Bye-bye.